Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first Spider-Man movie. Wow. Well, I've been uh, I've been sitting on this one for quite a while, um, and I finally got around to reviewing it. And uh, guys, it's great. I mean, I I love this movie. I watched this movie a lot when I was a kid, and you know what? It still holds up pretty well as a movie. To start things off, guys, Spider Man is a classic, nostalgic, fun movie, and Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker and Spider Man. Yeah, he's kind of old, but you know, I think they did a good job playing it safe and getting an older actor than trying to rely on a younger actor that might not do as well. From the way it's filmed and directed and the style, this movie definitely feels like an older film. And from the combo of Sam Raimi and Danny Elfman, it honestly makes a great pairing for not just this movie, but the entire trilogy. Telly ho. The story is pretty solid for the movie at the time. I mean, it's like two hours long and it packs so much into the first hour. You know, you have to introduce characters and set up Peter Parker getting his powers and Uncle Ben dies and Norman becomes Green Goblin. There are definitely a lot of short scenes throughout that add things to the movie, but some don't necessarily feel like they needed to be there or maybe they could have been placed a little better. And the scenes in this movie vary from like 10 fucking seconds to like five minutes, you know? You have some slow conversations between Peter and MJ at times, or you have like really quick things where like Green Goblin comes in and just blows up a military compound and he just dips out and then all of a sudden Peter and Harry are graduating. Like that's that's a weird transition, but okay. The fight scenes were average and honestly sometimes shorter than I remember. And for two hours they could have focused on like a solid five or six fights rather than having little clips here and there, but I mean for what they did, I think they did a pretty decent job. The characters are all pretty good in general. You have Peter and Norman are obviously the focus, and they do a great job in their roles. Willem Dafoe is the best by far, in my opinion, acting-wise, and his dialogue is you know, a little cheesy at times, but he poses a strong threat to Peter and, honestly, New York. I think this scene just absolutely takes the cake and stands out for not only Willem Dafoe, but for Green Goblin and acting in the entire movie, because he does such a fucking good job, and the filmmaking and directing is just so good with him talking to himself in the mirror, and it's just so well shot. And you're just able to see clearly which one is Norman, which one is Green Goblin, and it's just like, holy shit, it's just night and day, he does an amazing job, and I'm really glad they cast him. I mean, a crazy guy on a glider that can drop tons of bombs and just shoot people from the sky is an absolute menace. Toby also does a great job at playing Peter Parker and a Spider-Man. He's always trying to save people and do the right thing, which shows a character with good morals. It's honestly very humanizing for him to be angry and hunt down the guy he thought killed Uncle Ben as well. It shows that even good people can be overwhelmed by emotions and mistakes. Characters like MJ, Aunt May, and Harry are all fine in this movie as well, and they don't necessarily do a whole lot, but they're good characters for Peter to have in his story. Remember, with great power, great responsibility. I do really like the scene between Peter and MJ when he describes how he feels about her, and um, I think it was really well done, besides the fact that it is kind of slow and you have some awkward pauses between, but the movie is just kind of shot like that sometimes, which is one of the things that kind of takes the movie down a little bit. An interaction that Peter has with someone um, being the wrestler is something I oddly love, because he just has the weirdest line, and it's just so fucking hilarious. I got you for three minutes! Three minutes of bleak time! Ah! They did actually use some CGI. Um, you actually had this scene, which 
was something that I honestly forgot about. I remember the scene where he hunts down the guy he thought killed Uncle Ben, but I never remember this scene too much. And when I watched it, I'm like, holy shit, that's actually kind of good. And I think because it's nighttime, it plays in their favor. But I'm like, this isn't, like, super cheesy, to be honest. This is, like, actually pretty well done. And it was really surprising for 2002. The other CGI in this movie is sometimes when Spider-Man is swinging around the city. And I think they did a great job implementing him into the movie. I mean, his scenes and CGI motions look very natural and really well done. A few of the Green Goblin shots when he's on his glider, you can tell he's not actually there, but looks okay enough to keep in the movie. And honestly, for a final draft, but for a cheesy superhero movie in 2002, the suits for Spider-Man and Green Goblin are pretty cool and pretty good. I mean, there's times where you can tell you're like, I'm, I am kind of looking at two people in like weird buff costumes, but there's other times where you're like, oh man, that's Spider-Man, that's fucking awesome. But I couldn't fully review this movie if I did not include the fucking soundtrack. I love it. Jesus Christ, I love it. Okay, Danny Elfman, phenomenal job. Does amazing things across the board. And it's not just this movie. And he makes a stellar and iconic and beautiful and nostalgic theme for Spider-Man. And it's just, it's something I'll always remember. And, and it's not just because of how amazing and memorable it is, but I've also seen this movie probably like 30 times or so in my entire life. So I've kind of heard it a lot at this point. And so I hope I always remember it, to be honest. One of the other things I did not mention in this movie is your boy, J. Jonah Jameson. Jesus Christ, J.K. Simmons is fucking phenomenal as J. Jonah Jameson. He is too perfect and i'm so glad they picked him because he's just he's just outstanding honestly every scene every line he is so dramatic and energetic and has so much flair and energy into what he's saying and it's just so fucking good it's it's such good energy and it's so funny with the things it's not just like oh he's calling spider-man a menace and that's you know iconic to the comics or anything like that but it's even things like oh, crap crap Crap. Mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. And he's just so, like, he's so blunt. He's a little harsh. But you know what? It's It always feels like it's coming from a good place. I think an overlooked moment is when Green Goblin comes in and attacks him. And even though he was just minding his own business, and all of a sudden he's being attacked by something, and, like, Peter's, like, right at the fucking door, he actually doesn't rat Peter out and tell Green Goblin that he's the one who takes pictures and, you know, put him in danger. And I'm like, that's that's kind of a small good character moment that I think is kind of overlooked because then it obviously turns the focus on Green Goblin capturing Spider-Man. But I, I thought it was cool. It was just kind of nice to see a little bit of heart in him, even though he's always yelling and calling Spider-Man a menace, you know. I think these movies also do a really good job about being older and I think that plays into their favor because you have a lot more modern, you know, adaptations of Spider-Man. But I feel like these were really good, true comic book adaptations of Spider-Man. You know, they try to take the cheesiness and the simplicity and, you know, iconic characters and personalities and rip them straight from the comics and put them on a screen. And I think they did a really good job of doing that. With great actors, story, and characters, and the beloved iconic theme from Spider-Man, from Danny Elfman, it honestly really takes me back to believing that this was the one and only Spider-Man that we knew. And growing up as a kid, this definitely is what made me fall in love with Spider-Man, was the Tobey Maguire movies. And I I honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything better. And, and it's cheesy, but... It's, it's still so fun, and so iconic, and so good. And you know, like everything in life, it's, it's, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect film. But it's honestly a movie that I'll always know and love till I die. I think if I were to wrap this up, I think I would give Spider-Man a confident 7 out of 10. Because I think it's really good as a movie. You know, you got great characters, story, and soundtrack. And yeah, it's not perfect, that, but... For what it's worth, it's it's still a good movie, and it absolutely holds up today. 
that's going to about do it for my review of Spider-Man, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I enjoyed this movie, and uh, if you guys did as well, feel free to leave a comment down below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you guys look forward to more movie reviews in the future. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. This is my gift, my curse. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man.